What I've got right here is a key. This key opens DeMontis Sabonis' lock on an all-NBA team. Yeet. See you later. No need for that. No need to take that lock off. DeMontis Sabonis absolutely deserves all NBA recognition. He dominates the Brooklyn Nets tonight like he's been dominating the league all season long. And the Sacramento Kings have now secured their first winning season since 2006. You're listening to Locked on Kings. You are Locked on Kings, your daily Sacramento Kings podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is that time. Time for another episode of Locked on Kings. Hello and welcome into Locked on Kings, your podcast hub for Sacramento Kings coverage all regular season and soon to be all playoffs long. Today presented by Ultimate Basketball GM. If you ever dreamed of becoming an NBA GM and managing your own basketball franchise, this is the game for you. To download the game, just visit ultimatebasketballgm.com or look it up on the app stores. Our listeners get 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo code LOCKED ON all caps in the game. My name is Matt George. I have the privilege of being your host here. I'm a Sacramento sports reporter and producer for ABC 10 News. The Sacramento Kings keep winning. Water is wet. The sky is blue. Uh, unless the purple beam, of course, is shining like it is tonight. Uh, death, taxes, Kings winning basketball. We're just getting used to it at this point. But in all seriousness, another good win for the Sacramento Kings on the road. It is their 21st road win of the season. Their most road wins since 2004-2005, that season. So I'm going to be throwing a lot of firsts at you. I'm going to be throwing a lot of numbers at you, especially when it comes to DeMontis Sabonis. There is no argument against DeMontis Sabonis being an all-NBA uh, player that makes any sense whatsoever. There are not three centers in the NBA better than DeMontis Sabonis. Now, I'll give you Nikola Jokic. I'll give you Joel Embiid. I'm not giving you anyone else besides those two. If it really comes down to it, the absolute worst that Sabonis should be is all-NBA third-team center. But... He also is classified as a center forward. So that's really his only chance being a power forward is his only chance of making it to the all NBA second team. I'm aware of that. But the reality is when you look at Nikola Jokic especially and when you look at DeMontis Sabonis, the gap between the two of them is not as big as you think. When I talk about gap, I'm talking about skill gap and, and the numbers that they put up and how effective they are. I'll get more into that in a little bit. Tonight, DeMontis Sabonis in this Kings 101-96 win in Brooklyn. 24 points, 21 rebounds, 5 assists, and 4 blocks. He had 20 points and 12 rebounds at halftime. DeMontis Sabonis simply dominant. Like, the Nets had absolutely no answer for him. From the very beginning, he was looking to attack, attack, attack. He was a monster in the paint, of course, as you see right there with 20 rebounds, or 21 rebounds, rather. A monster on the boards. A lot of those rebounds, offensive rebounds. The Nets had nobody to match up with him. And look, there are going to be a decent amount of teams like the Dallas Mavericks, for example, that are going to have a hard time matching up with the size that DeMontis Sabonis presents. And we've seen Sabonis be the guy that sets up his teammates, right? We've seen him sometimes be a little too passive, not take as many shots or be as aggressive as we know he's capable of being as a scorer. Well, we didn't have that problem tonight because Sabonis recognizes when he has the mismatch and when he can take full advantage. And the Sacramento Kings continue to have success on the second night of a back-to-back. -back. I'll share with you a number that, that speaks to that success. But Sabonis recognized in this game here tonight, okay, maybe De'Aaron's a little bit tired from putting the team on his back and hitting the game winner in Chicago last night. Uh, we're, we're in the grind here uh, towards the end of the regular season. Game two of a four-game road trip, second night of a back-to-back. -back. Hey, here is an opportunity for me to really take some of the load on myself. Uh, and especially with Kevin Herter's injury, which we'll get to, the Kings needed this kind of performance from DeMontis Sabonis, and he didn't disappoint. Let's go back to the sabonis Nikola Jokic comparison. Now, hear me very, very closely, because there are going to be some Nikola Jokic fans, and I know there are going to be some Denver Nuggets fans that are listening to this podcast and go, are you out of your mind? Nikola Jokic is a back-to-back -back MVP, could be going for a historic third uh, straight-time MVP, by the way. Uh, there's only three guys in NBA history that have won three straight MVPs. That's Larry Bird, that's Wilt Chamberlain, and Bill Russell. So he might join elite, elite, elite company, uh, and he certainly has a good argument for winning the MVP this season. 
Look, hear me very, very closely here. I'm not saying that DeMontis Sabonis is on the same level as Nikola Jokic, right? The numbers suggest that. The eye test suggests that. Nikola Jokic might be the best passing big man the league has ever seen. Like, I'm, I'm realistic here. I'm not just riding the hype train of the Sacramento Kings after another victory. But what I'm saying is the gap between Nikola Jokic and DeMontis Sabonis is not as significant as people make it out to be. It's not. Let's look at some of the numbers here. We're talking about averages for the season. And these were the numbers coming into tonight's game, both for Jokic and for DeMontis Sabonis. Sabonis is averaging 19 points this season, 12.4 rebounds, 7.2 assists, the shooting splits, 61% from the field, 37% from three-point range, 76% from the free throw line. Nikola Jokic's numbers, scoring significantly better, 24.7 points per game. It's almost a five-point difference. 11.9, actually, that's over a five-point difference. 11.9 rebounds, 10 assists, so he's averaging a triple-double, 63% from the field, 40% from three-point range, 81% from the free-throw line. Again, numbers, this man's averaging a triple-double, right? DeMontis Sabonis, a, a five-point gap in, in points per game is significant. I'm not saying, let me clarify for the a millionth time, I am not saying that DeMontis Sabonis and Nikola Jokic are on the same level. Again, my point is the gap between the two is not as monstrous as people make it out to be. This is more about elevating uh, DeMontis Sabonis in the eyes of the average NBA fan more than it is bringing these two players on even playing field or even bringing Nikola Jokic down a peg, right? This is about giving Sabonis the recognition he deserves as one of the best players in the NBA and certainly a top three big in the NBA. Sabonis, by the way, if we're talking about these numbers, we also, also have to add in this caveat. Nikola Jokic is the absolute number one option on his team. Now, of course, the ball does run through DeMontis Sabonis a lot here in Sacramento, but De'Aaron Fox is a top guy here. Nikola Jokic gets more opportunities to score and is looked at more as a scorer uh, in Denver than DeMontis Sabonis is. That plays a factor. That's not an excuse because, again, DeMontis Sabonis gets the ball a lot and Nikola Jokic is a great passer and gets his teammates involved as well. But that is something to bring up when you're looking at these numbers. DeMontis Sabonis leads the league in double-doubles with 56. Nikola Jokic is 51. So clearly, uh, DeMontis Sabonis has more double-doubles than Jokic does. But when it comes to triple-doubles, uh, uh, Jokic has run away with it. He's got 27 triple-doubles this season. DeMontis Sabonis is the next closest with 11. He passed Luka Doncic. They were tied at 10 uh, recently. And last night, he passed Luka Doncic which, with his 11th. So we're talking about the top two statistically in double-doubles and the top two statistically in triple-doubles. And they're bigs. In the modern NBA, that's all about guards and wings and three-point shooting and playing fast. Your statistical triple-double and double-double leaders are big men. In fact, I could argue, I mean, it's, it's obvious the best players in the league right now are European players. I would argue the majority of the top players in the league are bigs or at the very least forwards. So Sabonis and Jokic, again, don't have to be looked at on a completely similar even tier. But Sabonis statistically, is right behind Jokic in a lot of different ways. Here's some other uh, numbers to throw at you about DeMontis Sabonis and the game he had tonight and the season that he's having uh, in total. DeMontis Sabonis is the first player this season with 20 points, 10 rebounds, and 3 blocks in a half. He had that. He had 20 points, uh, 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 12 rebounds, and 3 blocks at halftime in tonight's game. He joins Giannis Antetokounmpo, as the only player with 20 points and 10 rebounds at halftime this season. He also has four, or rather five, 2020 games this year. That's one more than Giannis Antetokounmpo. Nobody else has more than two. That was a number provided by StatMuse. He passed DeMarcus Cousins for second most rebounds in a season in the same night, then passed Otis Thorpe for the most rebounds in a single season in Sacramento Kings history. Uh, and, and like I mentioned, he had that 20-point, 20 20-rebound 20 game, uh, and he, he tied DeMarcus Cousins uh, for the 2014-2015 season. The numbers suggest that DeMontis Sabonis is not only one of the best bigs in Sacramento Kings history already, and I tweeted out, actually, I'm going to pull this up because I think it's really important looking at the context of how DeMon uh, good DeMontis Sabonis has been for the Sacramento Kings since he's been traded. This is from Jason Ross. Sabonis has now played 82 games for the Kings, so a full season technically. As a King, he's averaging 19 points, 12 rebounds, and 7 assists a game. He has 68 double-doubles, 11 triple-doubles, 
five 2020 games, two Western Conference Player of the Week awards, plus a trip to the All-Star Game, and the Kings' record with DeMontis Sabonis is 46-36. and 36. And again, people called this trade malpractice and suggested that DeMontis Sabonis was never going to be an All-Star again and was going to get lost in the shuffle in the Western Conference. Just absolutely absurd takes that he continues to, to prove wrong, but it's not even about proving those wrong because those were nev never had a chance to be true to begin with. But what, what there is a chance to be true is that DeMontis Sabonis is a top three big in the NBA. DeMontis Sabonis absolutely should be an all-NBA player. And in addition to that, DeMontis Sabonis should be looked at in a similar light to how we look at Nikola Jokic and his skill set as a big man in the NBA today. Now let's talk about the Kings as a season, or as a whole, as a team. The Kings clinched their first winning season since 2005-2006. Of course, the last time the Kings made the playoffs. With the win tonight, that's 42 wins on the season. They lose out for the remainder of the season. They'll still be one game over 500. Of course, that's not going to happen. But at, at worst, this is a winning season for the Sacramento Kings. Like I mentioned, also 21 road wins for the first time since the 2004-2005 season. Now, of course, expectations are starting to shift, right? We're looking towards the playoffs. We're excited about postseason basketball, and rightfully so. It's coming. We have the uh, NCAA National Tournament going on as we speak inside the Golden 1 Center right now. That event is going to pale in comparison. It's a great event. It's going to pale in comparison to the NBA playoffs being in there in uh, less than a month now, right? Put all of that aside for a second. Just think about it. The Sacramento Kings are guaranteed a winning record. Guaranteed to be winners in the regular season. Now, a lot of people say the regular season do doesn't matter. It, it's only what you do in the playoffs. Not for Sacramento. Maybe the Sacramento Kings will get to that point, and that would be wonderful, wonderful to have the luxury of not caring that much about the regular season because it's basically championship or bust. I would love for the Kings to get to that position. But this year, you best believe that the regular season matters for, to Sacramento Kings fans who have suffered for 16 years of not just not getting a winning season, not getting close. The closest they got was 39 under Dave Yeager, and that included a second-half collapse that ended up in Dave Yeager losing his job. Like, this Kings team has put their fans, of course, through the ringer over the last 16 years. So to take away all the stress, to take away all the expectations, to take away what's going to happen tomorrow, and just focus on today, the Sacramento Kings are a winning basketball team. Soak that in. Just feels incredibly awesome to say. Now, back to actually caring about the playoffs, the magic number for the Sacramento Kings is six. Six more wins in these final 13 games. Six more wins clinches a playoff spot. Not play in, play off. Doesn't clinch a top four seed, but just gets them guaranteed in the top six, guaranteed in the first round of the playoffs. Six more wins. And that number might and should honestly be down to four by the time this road trip is wrapped up. Like I said at the top of the show, today's episode of the Locked on Kings podcast is brought to you by Ultimate Basketball GM. If you've ever dreamed of becoming an NBA general manager and managing your own basketball franchise, your dream can come true with this game. It is the most true-to-life general manager basketball experience out there for you. You can hire the right coaches and assistants, trade and train players, make draft picks, navigate your franchise through free agency, the draft, and all the ups and downs of the regular season. Manage every strategic, uh, strategic and statistic aspect of your team, and you play through the regular season, the playoffs, lead your team to glory, all in this challenging and realistic game world. Ultimate Pro Basketball GM is completely free and playable offline. You can play on the go as you want and when you want to. Right now, I am almost 60 games into my first season. My team's not doing great. Just picked up win number 23. So uh, not the same season that the Sacramento Kings are having. But don't worry. I'm looking good. I have a really, really good chance at a top pick. I want to hear how your franchises are going. So let me know when you play Ultimate Basketball GM. Send me screenshots of your team. You can send those to me on Twitter at MattGeorgeSack or you can email them to me, MattGeorgeSports at gmail.com. Locked on Kings listeners can get up to 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo code locked on in the game store. So make sure you check that out to download the game. Just visit probasketballgm.com, scan the code or look it up on the app store. That's probasketballgm.com. Ultimate basketball GM start your dynasty today. 
So, of course, we're enjoying the Sacramento Kings win tonight. Of course, we're enjoying the dominance of DeMontis Sabonis. But in the first quarter, we had a bit of a scary moment. Kevin Herter uh, taking a hard fall. Initially, I thought he rolled his ankle, but he fell on his leg. Uh, and we found out from Adrian Wojnarowski about 10 minutes or so after the injury that, uh, or that Kevin Herter was going to be receiving an MRI uh, and would not return to the game. Naturally, Woj being the one to tweet it out before anybody else tweets it out, you immediately have concern of, could this be a really serious injury? injury. Hamstrings are no joke. Uh, like this could be a, a, could this could be a season ender for the Kings starting shooting guard? Well, thankfully, uh, we got word from a league source, myself, Sean Cunningham, uh, James Ham, Chris Biederman, like a lot of us in Sacramento got word from a local source that the Kings are only worried that it is a mild hamstring strain. He still is going to undergo, Kevin Herter is still going to undergo a uh, MRI tomorrow, Friday. Uh, so we'll get actual results and actual information then on, on what his injury is and how long he will be out. But it was very reassuring to hear that the Kings are optimistic that it's not that serious. Kevin Herter, we were told, uh, is in great spirits. So the Kings might have dodged yet another bullet injury-wise. That being said, talked before about the injury luck that the Sacramento Kings have, which I don't understand why it's luck and it's a negative thing for the Sacramento Kings versus a positive towards their training staff, a positive towards how well the, the players have taken care of themselves, a positive towards guys like De'Aaron Fox and DeMontis Sabonis who have continuously played through injury. And I guarantee you if Kevin Herter could have returned to the game, he would have returned to the game. But the Kings not only have to worry about Kevin Herter's health and, and uh, his best interests, they have to worry about trying to be as strong as they possibly can for the playoffs coming up. But ultimately, like, if there's a best-case scenario other than him not getting hurt altogether, this is basically it. Or as close to it, all indications point to it's not that serious. And in reality, the Sacramento Kings are built to handle stuff like this. Like, depth-wise, of course they could be better. But of all the positions for this to happen, of all the starters for this to happen, and this is in, by no means disparaging what Kevin Herter does because it's very difficult to replace Kevin Herter, especially with how good he's been averaging nearly 20 points per game in the month of March, he's been absolutely lights out for the Sacramento Kings on the perimeter. Not disparaging that. But with Malik Monk, with Terrence Davis, Kessler Edwards that's now getting more run, like the Kings are built to fill this gap. And it's not just that specific position. This team is full of next man up guys, right? So many different guys, we talked about this before, so many different players on this Kings roster are capable of stepping up and having big nights when needed. Malik Monk has some great moments again tonight. Malik Monk was huge in Chicago last night, right? How big were Trey Lyles and Kessler Edwards with the Kings win over the Phoenix Suns? Like this roster is loaded with guys that can step up when needed. So as much as the Sacramento Kings need Kevin Herter back and as much as he is an extremely important piece of the Sacramento Kings team going forward, the Kings can of course afford for Kevin Herter to take the time, and hopefully it's only a week or two weeks or three games or five games or whatever it is, they can afford for him to take the time to get right so that they can have him at as close to 100% as possible going into the playoffs and not worry about any kind of steep drop-off at that position because they have so many guys that are ready and capable of stepping up. Plus, other guys in other positions who are also willing to pick up the slack like they've done all season long. So... I guess it's good news, and we hope that uh, the MRI continues to provide that good news, and ultimately uh, Kevin Herter is okay, and Red Velvet can get back on the floor really soon. I mentioned Kessler Edwards. He has really impressed a lot of Kings fans. He's impressed me a lot over these past handful of games. Here's what impresses me the most about Kessler Edwards. He seems, I don't necessarily think fearless is the, night, the right word, he has no hesitation with his shooting. Like, we, we've seen what he provides on the defensive end of the floor. He's a long wing that can help really shore up that defense where the Sacramento Kings really struggle. He's not going to save the defense or fix the defense by any means. The Kings have made that perfectly clear. But the Kings struggle against lengthy athletic wings. Kessler Edwards can at least provide some of the defense on those players that the Kings have been lacking. And he's done so. We've seen Kessler Edwards provide the defense that we've also seen at times, like earlier on in the season, KZ Akpala was providing. The difference is, though, Kessler Edwards looks far more confident and comfortable shooting the basketball or uh, on the offensive end, period, than KZ Akpala ever was. And that's no disrespect to KZ, but with Kessler, not only have I seen him hit shots, even the shots that he's missing, they're no hesitation, they're in rhythm, catch and shoot. He, it looks like every single one's going in. He shoots them with the full confidence like every single one is going to go in. And look, tonight, 10 points, 4 of 6 shooting, 
two of uh, four from three-point range, three rebounds in 23 minutes. It's hard to ask for more. I know this was against his former team uh, in the Brooklyn Nets who traded him to the Kings before the trade deadline, so maybe there was a little bit of a revenge game narrative here. But look, if Kessler Edwards can average 40% or above, hit 40% or, uh, or more of his wide open three-point shots, not just three-point shots in general, I'm talking wide open looks that he is going to get that so many different players get by playing with De'Aaron Fox and DeMontis Sabonis and the rest of that Kings team that draws defenses in so much. If Kessler Edwards can hit 40 or more percent of those wide open three-pointers, he is an absolute lock for the Kings rotation. And he is exactly what the Sacramento Kings need. Provides that defense that they're so desperately looking for without having a steep drop-off on the offensive end. They're not mortgaging their offense and they're not uh, being taken advantage of by defenses who don't respect three-point shooters with him on the offensive side of the ball. And I think a perfect indication of how quickly Kessler Edwards has earned the trust of Mike Brown, look at the past few games, close games, and Kessler Edwards has been out there on the floor at least at times during crutch time, and he finished the game tonight for the Sacramento Kings in a close game against the Brooklyn Nets. Mike Brown already trusts him, and, I, and he's only going to get better. When this trade happened, it was a pretty unknown trade. Like, we didn't know too much about the guy, myself included. But I said it was a extremely low risk, potentially solid reward, and already the Kings are reaping that reward. If Kessler can continue to be this for the remainder of this season and in the playoffs, playing a handful of minutes, I don't know if he's going to play in the playoffs. I don't know if he's going to be part of the likely eight-man rotation that Mike Brown shrinks down to. I have no idea. Maybe he is, maybe he isn't. But if Going into this offseason, this is who Kessler Edwards is and can continue to be and build upon that next year. The Kings are in great shape and found a reliable rotational option that we know Mike Brown is going to take advantage of and is going to use. Let's go through some crazy numbers here from tonight's game. First off, the Kings won and only scored 101 points. I got this number from Damian Barling from ESPN 1320. That is the lowest point total in a Kings win so far this season. Typically, if you were to tell me a team held the Sacramento Kings to 101 points, I would tell you mm, the Kings probably lost that game, right? Especially with the fact that the Kings have been giving up in, in the one teens pretty consistently. Well, the Kings held their opponent to 96. It's only the third time this season that the Kings have held their opponents under 100. Of course, they're 3-0 and in those three games. 95 is the lowest. Twice they've held teams to 96. Now, here's some more specific numbers that blow my mind. You know how much offensive rebounding has been a problem for the Sacramento Kings as of late. And I'm talking about their opponents getting too many offensive rebounds and too many second chance opportunities. Tonight, the Brooklyn Nets only had three offensive rebounds. Now, a lot of that has to do with the dominance of DeMontis Sabonis, which we've already talked about, how good he is on the inside and how the Nets had nobody to handle DeMontis Sabonis' size. But only three offensive rebounds tonight. That is excellent for the Sacramento Kings and zero second chance points. Zero. That's massive for this team. And on top of that, only two fast break points allowed. So not only were the Kings securing the defensive glass, not only were they not allowing multiple second chance opportunities and scoring opportunities for the Brooklyn Nets, they weren't allowing the Nets to get out in transition. If they were missing shots, they were getting back. It's great to see, excuse me, that's great to see from the Sacramento Kings tonight. The Kings are now... Seven and five on the second night of back-to-backs this season. That's not necessarily fantastic. It's great to be over 500 on the second night of back-to-backs. So you'll take that even if it was uh, six and six, you'd probably take that, right? But here's the weird thing. Of those seven wins on the second night of back-to-backs, five of those wins are against rested teams. What I mean by that is five of those wins are against teams that were, or that had not played the night before. So the Kings had the disadvantage in five of those games and they still won. That's great for the Sacramento Kings. Now, unfortunately, they've lost a lot of games where they've taken on a team on a second out of a back-to-back. -back. I shouldn't say a lot. They've lost a fair amount of games where they were taking on an opponent on the second out of a back-to-back, -back, including the Washington Wizards, if I'm not mistaken, who the Kings are playing next, and we'll talk about their upcoming opponents here in just a second. Before we get to that, though, we have two, yes, Two more Locked On King sponsors to tell you about, including Built Bar. Now, March Madness is excellent for college basketball, but Built Bar March Madness is here as well. The Built March Madness bracket is here, and we know that you have a favorite bar or puff. Now is your time to make it count. Go to BuiltMarchMadness.com to vote for your favorites. Push Mint 
brownie to the moon. I'm still not over the fact they made it to the final four and lost a couple of years ago. Mint bar is the, or mint brownie is the best built bar out there. I will continue to vote for it every single day. And if you want to vote for mint brownie, you want to vote for coconut almond, you want to vote for churro, you can vote for them all uh, right now and try and get your favorite to the end. And when you vote for your favorite bar or puff, you will be entered into a drawing where 50 lucky locked on listeners will get a free box of built bars. Not only that, but a locked on fan will receive a 12 month subscription to built to have built best bars or puffs delivered monthly to you at no cost. You have to try built, take advantage and have some fun with our built bar March madness bracket, but also give the different flavors a try so you can properly vote for your favorite plus try their marshmallow puffs which are protein infused marshmallows we're talking bars that are good for you packed with protein replace that sweet tooth because they're 100 uh, covered in 100 percent chocolate give built bars a try you can order some on built.com or go to your local walmart or sam's club go to the pharmacy section and pick up a bar there and i'm telling you get mint brownie not just to the final four get it to the championship and give it the win that it deserves dang it built.com and Locked On Kings is also brought to you by FanDuel. We're, of course, past the midway point of the NBA season. We're in the home stretch. The playoffs are looming. It is the perfect time for you to start playing on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. It's like an insurance policy. So you bet on the Sacramento Kings to uh, win the championship. Well, you lose that bet, and... Well, maybe you'll win that bet, to be honest with you. But if you lose that bet, you can get $1,000 or $1,000 back in bonus bets right then and there. So you really can't lose that first bet. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on anything from the money line to point scores to threes drain. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same game parlay. Don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. So maybe I'm getting a little greedy here, but out of this four game road trip, I thought tonight's game in Brooklyn Second night of a back-to-back. If the Kings were going to lose any game on this road trip, this was the game that they were most likely to lose. They won it. They're 2-0 to start this road trip with games at Washington and games at Utah to wrap it up before returning home for a big game against the Boston Celtics. Maybe I'm getting greedy. I don't care. I think the expectation should be the Kings going 4-0 on this road trip at this point, right? I mean, they have to beat the Washington Wizards simply to get revenge for losing to the Washington Wizards on their home floor floor earlier this season. We don't need an Atlanta Hawks situation, right? The Kings were swept by the Atlanta Hawks this year. It's the most dumb part of this year, right? The Hawks are not a better team than the Kings. Whatever, it's a fluke, right? Let's not make it the same thing with the Washington Wizards. Beat the Washington Wizards, and then the Utah Jazz, the Kings and Jazz played a a nail-biter of a game in the Golden 1 Center. The Jazz, I think, are a a, a pretty decent team. They're not going to be an easy team for the Sacramento Kings to beat by any means. But the Kings are a top seed, the second seed in the Western Conference right now. The Utah Jazz are trying to make it via the play-in. The Kings need to handle business. They're the better team. I hope they play like it. Wrap up this road trip. Come home. And I'm telling you, if the Sacramento Kings go undefeated on this road trip, I think regardless of what happens in that Boston game, I think they're a lock for a top four seed, which means they're a lock for home court advantage. And that'll be another key that'll happily throw away. Appreciate your support here at the Lockdown Kings podcast. I want to share with you too, uh, like I mentioned earlier, March Madness is going on at the Golden One Center right now. It's the second time that March Madness, the uh, the opening two rounds have come to Sacramento, come to the Golden One Center. The last time was 2017. I did not get to cover the event at that time. The Golden One Center, if you haven't been is just a phenomenal venue, right? And Sacramento has been held back from hosting like the Final Four or hosting an All-Star game or anything like that, not because of the Golden One Center and its venue, but really because of the infrastructure downtown and hotel rooms and things like that. It's, 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 It's another side that we don't necessarily have to get into. But I'm telling you, downtown Commons, it was a beautiful day in Sacramento to see the fan bases for eight different schools out there having a good time. Many of them had never been to Sacramento before. For them to experience the Golden One Center that did a phenomenal job putting on that event it was great to see. It made me happy as a Sacramento and it made me excited because it did such a great job hosting that event. Imagine how great it's going to look 
posting Sacramento Kings playoff basketball in less than a month. I cannot wait for that. Of course, stick here on Locked on Kings for the remainder of this regular season, win or loss. We, of course, will talk about it, plus interviews with guests and things like that. That's still coming for you. Then we'll get into playoff basketball, uncharted territory for Locked on Kings, but you best believe we're going to hit it hard and have a lot of fun. I hope you will join me for that. Thank you so much for your support of this podcast. As always, can't wait to have you join me on the next episode of Locked on Kings. Until then, my name is Matt George. You have been listening to the Locked on Kings podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network.